Hey, it's Jordan. Delighted to be joined by Jonathan Sokolo. Uh, he's an environmental attorney and activist down in Virginia. Uh, I met you years ago, I think at this point, four or five years ago in Virginia, uh, okay. as you and others were fighting against the Mountain Valley Pipeline, which has seen a lot of deaths and then uh, unfortunately rebirths. Uh, and now it's been, uh, it seems, unless something changes, fast-tracked uh, by this absurd debt ceiling deal, which is really unnecessary in the first place, as uh, it seems Biden has agreed to uh, include the fast-tracking of this pipeline, which would go through uh, West Virginia, Virginia, I think parts of North Carolina, up some of the steepest slopes uh, in the country. Um, I have interviewed folks down there that uh, it's being forced through their property uh, that have said that if it explodes, uh, it has a blast radius of two and a half miles. When you're talking about uh, pipelines uh, going under this kind of land, if there's an explosion, the blast radius uh, could be potentially two, two and a half miles. Everything will be dead in two and a half miles. And that's all but my son and if he's visiting that wipes us out i mean um my sister-in-laws both live in town and my brother-in-laws up here some and some not so that will wipe out the seventh generation of terry's pretty much uh, two and a half mile that's all my friends all my neighbors and all my family not to mention you know the environmental effects and whatnot uh, briefly, just give people a brief history on uh, the fight against MVP and um, why this is so dangerous that Biden is uh, essentially to get this debt deal, uh, allowing it to go through. Well, thanks uh, for the question and thanks for having me again, Jordan. Um, this has been a very long fight and it is ongoing. Um, Mountain Valley Pipeline was first proposed in 2014. Um, they didn't start construction until 2018. Um, they got tied up in, in permitting issues uh, both before and then after that, they started construction and, and soon after construction started, construction ceased um, because it turns out, as, as we've been saying all these years, they cannot build this pipeline safely through, as you mentioned, um, some of the most beautiful rugged terrain uh, in the eastern United States. Um, uh, they racked up hundreds of violations, millions of dollars of fines from both Virginia and West Virginia. They kept losing their permits in court as fast as they were being issued. Uh, uh, the Fourth Circuit uh, Court of Appeals, Circuit Court of Appeals, threw out permits to cross the Jefferson National Forest, threw out permits uh, that uh, in ignored uh, protections that are required for endangered species. Uh, they threw out permits regarding water crossings. They did it multiple times. Uh, and then just last Friday, this past Friday, the DC Circuit Court of Appeals, which is regarded as the second highest court in the land after the Supreme Court, uh, question yet another permit, this one issued by the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, which is the lead regulatory, federal regulatory um, body for interstate pipelines, uh, and through that permit back to FERC uh, to review uh, and really to answer the question why they didn't, uh, why FERC did not order what's called a supplemental environmental impact study uh, after all of this flooding and violations and, and sedimentation and destruction that was wrought in 20. 18. So it's been sent back to FERC. This was just on Friday, I must stress that, uh, to either issue a new environmental impact study uh, or to explain why they didn't do so in the first place. And then in the midst of this, uh, 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 and this pipeline has not only been delayed for years, it was supposed to be completed in 2018. Uh, it's billions of dollars over budget. It's actually costing now twice, almost twice what it was originally proposed. It is the single most expensive pipeline per mile ever conceived in the United States, in US history. Uh, and it would produce 2 billion cubic feet per day of, of fracked methane. Uh, it would add to carbon pollution. Uh, it would certainly add to methane pollution, which is actually, methane is actually more potent uh, uh, gas, uh, greenhouse gas. Uh, and they couldn't get it done. Uh, they just couldn't get it done because they kept losing their permits because they can't comply with the law. So Joe Manchin came up with the idea to just exempt this company from all, uh, all environmental regulations, period, and just legislate it into existence. Uh, uh, forget about endangered species, forget about protections to the water, forget about protections to the land, forget about landowners' rights under eminent domain, just legislated it. And he tried this four times in 2022, 
uh, uh, to attach it to must pass, so-called must pass legislation, uh, uh, um, uh, bills that, you know, to authorize federal spending, appropriations bills, uh, the defense authorization bill. He failed four times in 2022. So now he's come up with this harebrained scheme to attach it to another must pass, to the mother of all must pass legislations, which is this manufactured crisis that they're calling the debt ceiling. Uh, uh, to, and he's included it as section 324 of that bill, totally unrelated to the debt ceiling. Uh, the bill itself is terrible, really is, is continued, uh, continued assault on working people and poor people, uh, cutting uh, food stamp benefits, imposing work requirements, blaming the poor for, for, for the system in which we live that attacks the poor, uh, millions of, of poor people on a daily basis, uh, and includes gutting of environmental protections, and then legislates the Mountain Valley Pipeline. And why are they doing this? Because they can't get it done through regular order. They can't get it done. Uh, they can't get it through the courts. So what this really shows, Jordan, is how strong the movement to stop the Mountain Valley Pipeline is and how weak Mountain Valley Pipeline and its apologists and its paid surrogates in Congress really are. Uh, they cannot get this pipeline completed unless they threaten to blow up the world economy, literally blow up the world economy, uh, unless, unless uh, and then dare members of Congress uh, to, to vote against it. But we're fighting back and we'll continue to fight back. We're going to fight to, to take this out of to take this section 324 of the Mountain Valley Pipeline provision out of uh, out of the bill. It's really unprecedented, the idea that Congress, uh, and, and, I, and just to describe it a little further, what this bill actually says in about three or four pages, it not only directs every federal agency to issue any permit that's required, it exempts those permits from judicial review, and it exempts state permits from judicial review. Uh, I, I think, honestly, conservatives- kind of, what they, kind of what they do in authoritarian countries, right? It's 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 Stephen Miller's wet dream, really. Um, the authority of the of of, uh, of the, the executive branch shall not be questioned. I mean, it really is. Uh, I, I've got to say, um, it, it directs the federal agencies to issue the permits regardless of the law, uh, and then says they can't be taken up in court. The courts have no jurisdiction whatsoever. I think conservatives, Republicans, should really wonder about this because what happens when the shoe is on the other foot? What happens when a different Congress? directs federal agencies to deny permits to a fossil fuel project and says the courts can't review it. Uh, right. They're not going to be too happy about it, but this precedent would exist, uh, in fact, to, to allow uh, that to, to happen. Uh, but we're fighting back. Um, the news today, uh, breaking news in the last few hours, is the entire Virginia House delegation Democrats, all six of them, have come out in support of an amendment that has been introduced by uh, Representative Jennifer McClellan uh, to strip this Mountain Valley Pipeline provision, this outrageous provision, uh, from uh, from the bill altogether, and to pass a clean uh, debt ceiling uh, uh, bill. Uh, Senator Tim Kaine in the Senate uh, is introducing uh, a similar, an identical uh, provision to strip it out of the Senate version. Uh, so we fight on, and hopefully we will we will defeat this latest uh, what we call the dirty deal. Uh, and if we don't, we'll fight it in the courts, and we'll fight it in every way that we've been fighting it for 10 years. This shall not stand. Um, should add, uh, just so happens, uh, Next Error Energy, who owns Mountain Valley Pipeline, has given a ton of money to Chuck Schumer, not to mention Joe Manchin. Hundreds uh, of thousands of dollars, that's correct. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think about this in terms of Flint. Obviously, you know, that was a water pipeline, but that was a privatization scheme that they built a completely unnecessary duplicative water pipeline that was running parallel uh, the existing water pipeline that brought Flint their water from Detroit uh, to Flint. That's why Flint was on the Flint River in the first place, because they were um, building this new water pipeline. Well, everything I know is there's not a, there's not a supply shortage of natural gas in Virginia. There's not like a gigantic demand that requires this brand new Mountain Valley pipeline. It just seems like a boondoggle for the fossil fuel company, contractors, landowners. It also seems like if Biden is trying to, you know, protect uh, the economy that he is allowing, you know, protecting, uh, you know, uh, the uh, working people of America, so to speak, from an economic collapse. Well, the collateral damage is make people in Appalachia on the Appalachian Trail a sacrifice zone. So let's start with, is there a need for this pipeline at all in terms of supply and demand? And it seems like 
they have Biden has surmised that this is an acceptable sacrifice zone to get this deal through. Yeah, no, that's absolutely 100 percent correct. Um, uh, it, it, this this legislation is built on a series of lies. Uh, lie number one, uh, which you've identified, uh, is demand in Virginia, demand in Southeast uh, United States is actually down. Demand in Europe is down. I mean, they're demagoguing on this, saying the war in Ukraine requires that we uh, uh, build uh, natural gas pipelines uh, to save Europe uh, and meet their demand. Well, demand in Europe is down, uh, uh, and we had the whole separate discussion. But the idea uh, that the solution uh, to 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 uh, to Russian aggression uh, and Russian uh, blackmail on fossil fuel uh, uh, supplies is to make us more reliant on fossil fuels is just absolutely absurd. Uh, this is all about money. This is all about uh, buying senators and Congress people uh, to legislate uh, private interest legislation. This isn't any this isn't a public project. This is a private company uh, that uh, wants to build this pipeline for profit, despite the absence of any demand. Uh, the demand that they they demonstrated in order to get this approved by the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, which is required to do, uh, was based on uh, contracts with their subsidiaries, uh, uh, not with other not with other companies, not with other customers. They agreed to sell the gas to themselves. Uh, and the way the rules work with FERC, with the FERC, is that you get a 14 percent return on your investment in the pipeline. So before you pump a, a drop of, of natural gas, uh, you're already making a 14 percent profit for your shareholders for Wall Street. Uh, so so it's all about building it. Uh, regardless of demand. Uh, and by the way, Virginia passed the Virginia Clean Economy Act uh, a couple of years back, uh, which which requires the transition to clean energy. Uh, this becomes a stranded asset. I mean, this goes in the ground, the, this pipeline they want to operate for 40 or 50 years. It's a stranded asset within five or 10 years. Uh, and it's certainly not necessary now. So, so this legislation is built on the lie uh, that there's a demand for this. It's also built on the lie that uh, that the company and Joe Manchin keep repeating that it's quote 94 percent complete, uh, which is which is just pure fiction by the company's own uh, uh, reports. They have to file weekly reports with with uh, with FERC uh, in which they say that it's 55.8 percent complete uh, to restoration. Uh, they ignore uh, pieces of of the, what constitutes complete and focus on pipe in the ground and say, well, it's more than 90% complete. That's like saying that you put the frame up to your house and you have no roof and you have no walls and you have no electric and plumbing, but it's almost done. Uh, right. <laughs> if, if I had a contractor like that, I'd fire that contractor. And that's exactly what uh, Congress should do is, is should and, fire and, Mountain Valley Pipeline. And what do you say? Because I see kind of the Biden stands and the MSNBC type viewer you know, applauding him, uh, expert, uh, you know, maneuvering, you own the Republicans and all this nonsense. I don't know, maybe because they don't live on in the Appalachian Trail, but I don't know. I there were plenty of other options. Uh, it seems like the president seems averse to doing things that might be legally challenged. We know rep Republicans have no problem with that. Uh, there was the 14th Amendment uh, that literally says the debt shall not be questioned. Uh, there was ideas about minting the coin, whatever you think. There seemed to be ideas uh, where could have completely averted uh, this, um, you know, forced uh, forced uh, disaster. Uh, because now he set has set a precedent that this is going to happen every time with the debt ceiling. That you're going to have to sell out the poor, sell out the big, big, uh, big oil, and you're probably going to have to give more each and more each and each time because the Republican Party certainly is not going to become less extreme in the next few years. So uh, what are your thoughts on a president who ran on environmental justice and a lot of highfalutin phrases? Well, he, he talks a good game. And if, and if words could solve the climate crisis, we'd be in great shape. But unfortunately, words don't solve the climate crisis. Uh, he talks out of both sides of his mouth, frankly, Jordan. He, he um, talks about environmental justice, announces environmental justice reforms, uh, and then and then approves the Willow Project, approves more drilling on the North Slope of Alaska, approves, uh, approves more offshore draw, drilling, approves the Mountain Valley Pipeline. Uh, he, he said he said he would not negotiate over the debt ceiling, uh, and now the Republicans have turned this into a hostage drama. And what has he done? He's paid to get the hostage released. Uh, so if you're Joe Biden, uh, and as you put it, the MSNBC crowd, you'll say you'll applaud and say uh, the hostage has been released. 
uh, if you are anybody who's normal thinking, you will say, if you pay billions of dollars to a hostage taker and the hostage is released, uh, you, you haven't won. You've just encouraged the hostage taker to take more hostages and they'll be back. They'll be but back. But isn't it long. just read, isn't it just shuffling along now? People who live along the path of this pipeline are now the hostages to if and when the pipeline explodes. Yeah, I mean, I mean, this is I mean, I'm, I'm really sick of, of hearing uh, people pontificate about how this is a small price to pay. I've seen that uh, repeatedly. Uh, tell that to somebody in Appalachia who lives in the blast zone here. Uh, they've been saying that it's a small price to pay for for well over a hundred years, uh, as Appalachia has been uh, has been destroyed uh, uh, by fossil fuel companies going back to the 1800s, going back to the to the mining, uh, coal mining, which is still going on, mountaintop removal, all of this. Uh, they've been they've been asked to bear the brunt of uh, of of the of the pollution of the denigration of their environment, uh, and and people in Appalachia are the backbone of this country. They built uh, they built the 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 um, the middle class. They built the industrial strength that got us to win World War II. Uh, they they are hard uh, and dedicated people, uh, and they're being underestimated here. They're not only being screwed; they're being underestimated because we will fight back with everything we have at our disposal, uh, and we will keep fighting until the Mountain Valley Pipeline is defeated. Uh, there's enough sacrifice zones, and enough. Uh, it, you can't treat an entire region of the country. As a sacrifice zone, they do this. They do this uh, in Texas and Cancer Alley in Louisiana. Uh, they do this in Flint. Uh, you know, to, to get on TV and say it's a small price to pay, well, move to Flint, move to Louisiana, or to, to Alabama, uh, or to West Virginia, uh, and and you tell me it's a small price to pay when your kids are being poisoned and your land and water are being destroyed. And uh, last question: Not that you're an earth scientist or anything, but the media portrays this kind of just as like a regular pipeline. As far as I know, I mean, this is not, this very little flat land this is going through. You're talking about going up mountains, slopes, uh, thousands of water crossings. Uh, can you just talk about, forget explosions, but just fract normal fracturing and movement in the earth, leaks, uh, the damage this can do to water, air, soil, et cetera. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And and to that point, uh, the, the portions of the pipeline that are left to be built uh, are in the most steep uh, terrain uh, along along this 300 mile uh, route. Uh, it's an earthquake prone uh, 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 region uh, in addition to that. And it has what's called karst, which is a limestone formation, basically like Swiss cheese, uh, uh, which moves. Um, ask your viewers to, to Google uh, Nixon Ridge explosion, N-I-X-O-N Ridge explosion. Uh, I think it was about two years ago. Uh, it was what was called a, a, a first in class uh, natural gas pipeline, uh, the latest and greatest technology. Uh, uh, and it was it was put into operation in, I think, January of whatever year that, year that was, 20 or 2021. 20, uh, and six months late, six months later, it blew up. This first in class pipeline blew up, created a huge crater. Uh, and thank God it was in a, in a relatively unoccupied area. But if that was at somebody's house and you've been to people's houses, Jordan, uh, who are, who, you know, whose front door is 50 feet for the Mountain Valley Pipeline, if that were to happen here, uh, people would be incinerated. Um, so they cannot do, and that was in a steep portion of that uh, uh, pipeline as well. Uh, there have been hundreds of what the industry calls slips uh, along the, for the Mountain Valley Pipeline. Slips is a euphemism for uh, for landslide where, where the pipe actually moves. This isn't rocket science. If you have welded pipe, uh, highly pressurized, and it moves, it cracks, and then it explodes. That's what happened at Nixon Ridge. That's what will happen with Mountain Valley Pipeline, inevitably. I would say there's 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 a much a, a very strong likelihood uh, that if this is ever put in operation, there will be slips, there will be landslides, and there, there will be uh, explosions. Uh, and I don't want to be in the position of saying, I told you so. I want to be in the position of protecting folks from harm, protecting this region, uh, ending sacrifice zones, uh, not giving in to hostage takers in Congress. Uh, they should pass a clean debt ceiling, uh, leave the Mountain Valley Pipeline to the courts and to the regulatory agencies, which is what every other company has to do. Uh, I don't know why this company gets a special exemption from Congress. Uh, as I said at the top, uh, this just proves how weak they are. That they have to they have to create a manufactured hostage situation threatened to blow up the world economy 
in order to get this pipeline through because it can't get through through the regular process. Absolutely. Thanks for uh, continuing to talk to us about this. You've been fighting along with a lot of other activists, including just normal people who protested at the top of trees in West Virginia, in Virginia, uh, some of them for, I believe, a year or so um, to stop those trees from being shut down, uh, chopped down uh, as part of the route that was going through forests. So it's been a lot of organizing and, uh, you know, blood, sweat and tears on this. So thank you, Jonathan. Thank you for shedding light on this continually, Jordan. Appreciate it very much.